Asif, it's unusual for someone so young to sort of be building things and being successful is a sort of it's a, it's a, a cliche that architects don't really get going until they're in their 50s or something. But as you said, you've, you, you, you've had projects made. You Later on, we'll see a, a thing that you did at the, the Olympic site. Um, and, and, and your work is quite comes from a different place, doesn't it, from a lot of the previous generation. So tell us a little bit about what this means. And is Asif and Dave. This is sort of a composition from a, a blog which I run with another designer and architectural writer, uh, David Knight. Uh, we started it in 2010, just as a place where we could post images for each other to look at, because our, our respective partners were getting very bored of us sitting next to each other, kind of swapping uh, iPhone images and trying to make each other laugh. So this, uh, what we, it tends to be sort of a photo, uh, a, a comment and where it's from. This is on the Olympic Park, the, you know, the idea that, that a symbol is enough and the symbol can, can take any form. To, um, on Roman Road Market, beef also needs to be described as cow meat because people might not know what beef is. And then uh, to some sort of sublime moments, like below is uh, just an airplane which has done a U-turn and left a semicircular contrail, which is something incredibly beautiful, a drawing in the sky. So this sort of place is often a kind of pot where uh, a lot of, I uh, kind of harvest ideas from quite often. So this is an example. The photograph on the left is uh, a gypsophilia plant which uh, was growing on the route to my studio. It's a five minute walk from my house to my studio and I kind of pass this every day. Uh, in, in 2010 I, I won this residency at the Design Museum and uh, you know, I was kind of really battling with what to do for that project and they kept saying it needed to be contextual uh, and then it was literally, it was staring me in the face, this thing. So I thought, well, why don't I just ask this lady who owns the garden if I can take a bit of this and see what we can make with it. And um, the net result is kind of seen on the right, which is, uh, it's called Harvest. It's one of a series of furniture pieces which are about, I guess, questioning what objects you might feel comfortable to bring into your home. It's a bit, little bit about domesticity. I wasn't sure whether the project was finished at this stage. It kind of just... This is what got done. But strangely, uh, and quite interestingly, the, the boss of Muji saw the pictures of the chairs which we had done. Uh, with in flowers a, as well. With, with flowers as well, and said that we'd like to work on a project for, for Ide, which is one of their subsidiary brands. And uh, so Ide now produced the chair. And it's not a functional chair, it's a kind of idea of a chair. And it's a furniture shop. So it's kind of taken this own, its own life, which was not I didn't kind of will it to do it, but it did that. And I, I quite like that uh, um, appropriation. Uh, and, the, and the chair that they're producing, does it use real flowers or does it kind of reproduce the, the idea of a flower in plastic or something a bit more durable? No, it just uses real flowers. There's no translation. And I kind of said, let's, let's evolve it. Let's use some plastics. And let's, no, this is enough. We understand this. Let's, yeah. let's just produce this, yeah. which is maybe also quite Japanese yeah. in that way that it's it's fine, we don't need to do anything with it. So after you explain the last picture, I think we can get what's happening in this one. So you yes. saw a cloud and thought, ah, I can make a, a light from it or something like that. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it, was, it was actually, um, this is my, my five-year-old daughter, uh, Aska. Um, I was actually playing with, uh, sort of giving my kids a bath and uh, sort of started playing with the bubble bath. And, um, it, kind of probably quite classic architecty sort of thing to do but oh, I thought oh this could be quite why can't we make a wall out of a material like this which you can sculpt or why couldn't it be a roof what would what would that mean actually this first kind of uh, appeared at uh, the Maxi Museum in Rome because uh, they were sort of trying to do a pavilion there uh, in collaborating with MoMA um, and then Design Miami uh, I won this Design as a Future uh, uh, award uh, last year and so I thought let's try and make this into um, something that does actually produce this situation but in a room. So this was the first experiment in that, um, harnessing uh, soap and helium together to create this floating canopy. Uh, and, and so it's actually a cloud, it's, it's what, soap bubbles filled with helium or...? or no, yes, it is, but it, uh, it is a cloud but it's not a, it's not a kind of meteorologically perfect cloud. It's the shape of a cloud. And, and so how do you make it? And, how, and how, more importantly, how do you move it around? <laughs> how did you get it to Miami? Did it in a box? Or? You, I, um, I sourced some helium locally. This is a machine that we designed which creates the bubbles and mixes it with, with, with helium. 
and then these lift themselves off. And in, in this instance, the they're surrounded by a net, uh, I guess like a sock, and then they travel with the net. It's not something I'm proposing as a as a new way of uh, producing architecture, but I think it's maybe it's meant to stimulate me to think of what could be next. Now this is a real project, but did you apply the same sort of process as the last two you showed us? I mean, this is a real architectural project. Yes. Um, okay, so this is a Coca-Cola pavilion at the uh, Olympic Games. What you see is something, a structure which is 35 meters in diameter, just over 10 meters in height. It was next to the hockey arena on the Olympic Park, um, which still is there. And it's a cylinder which is wrapped around uh, by a ramp, which in total is 400 meters long. Uh, so 200 up and 200 down. As you go on that journey, the 200 meters, you touch these elements of the building, and each of them have quite a lot of sensor technology and also audio technology, which makes the building actually vibrate and produce very high quality sound. So you literally touch and the beat, the building starts emanating beats. So you become a kind of beatboxer, a performer. And all the sounds were recorded by Mark Ronson, the music producer. So Coke kind of sent him around the world. Uh, he recorded five Olympic uh, athletes' uh, sounds. Quite intimate stuff like uh, the pulling of an arrow. So you hear the kind of creak of the arrow and the thud of, a, of an arrow in the uh, target and so on. And then you get to the rooftop, which is the only uh, rooftop of uh, public access rooftop view of the whole Olympic Park. Can you tell us about this final image of yours? Um, this is a project uh, which has just opened. Uh, I just, it's a lot smaller. It's at the Design Museum. Uh, it's, I spoke about the designers in residence uh, commission I had at the beginning, uh, the Harvest Furniture. This year I was asked to design the exhibition itself. It's quite a small, modest thing, but I was sort of in Tokyo, I was looking at these these fabrics which uh, um, are used to kind of keep flies away from the uh, um, rubbish bins and so on outside a restaurant. And you can see the impression that the, build, that the cardboard boxes has left on the actual fabrics. It's kind of got this memory. And we used a fabric quite similar to this, actually a lot thinner, um, which also had um, electrical conductivity to form these little booths around the work of each of the four designers and residents. And the idea being that sort of, although see-through, they allowed to see the work, they also take some impression of the people coming through the space. So over the five months that it's there, it's going to kind of collect the, the impression of the table. But also, all of the electricity that's lighting the show is coming through the fabric itself. So I, I'm quite interested in, I guess, these these new ways of doing things and kind of maybe the future of what the space around us might look like. Brilliant. Asif, thank you thank so you. much. Thanks to all our speakers from today.